How's it going, everybody? Doing a second Genesis. Come chewing Sega Genesis video game collection video today. I want to right out of the gate say a majority of these are sports games. When I first started getting back into the Genesis, I had a lot of Genesis games when I was a kid. Most of those were long gone. And, uh, like I have some of the original cases I had when I was a kid in one game. <clears throat> it's still my original one, but I was picking up sports games because I loved the 16 bit sport games, especially the Genesis ones and some of the Super Nintendo ones as well. But mostly Genesis, so I was buying those. I buy a couple lots on eBay and stuff, so I have a lot of sport games. It's probably like 95% sport games. Nine, it's probably more like 90. Uh, maybe 80 even. <laughs> Either way, I'm just going to grab them. Some are in cases. Most aren't. Uh, first game here is Tecmo Super Baseball. I played a little of this when I picked it up. I had gotten this at a... Uh, Right before the shutdown in 2020, I had gotten this from Play and Trade was still over in Bayshore by Hobby Lobby and Coles in that shopping center. It moved like May of 2020 elsewhere. I think it's in Selden or something. I played a little bit, so it's all right. The tech mode games are cool because, especially for back then, because you had all the teams. You could Simulate a full season, stuff like that. Really fun. There's Tecmo Super NBA Basketball. I actually really like this game. I originally had this when I was a kid on the Super Nintendo. Um, but uh, this was in a lot that I got off eBay. It's the same game. Nothing different. Great music. It has the side to side chord. That's really cool. Like I said, I love when you keep the stats and stuff and these simulating seasons. You could literally, if you wanted to, play as every team. <clears throat> Actually, that would be hard because you play, you play as like a ton of teams. You just go nuts. And you can do also do coach or you can just simulate. But I always enjoyed this one. Columns three. It's a different mode in this one as well. The first one is still my personal favorite, but I didn't play a ton of this one, admittedly. Let me see if I can uh, USA US Gold presents Olympic Gold. This is the summer games for Barcelona. Actually had this one as a kid as well. That was all right. It's just pretty much the Olympic Games, like hurdles and stuff. Diving, I think, is in here. Pole vaulting, swimming. <laughs> this guy's face. <laughs> I'll randomly grab box ones. Uh, here's hard driving. Genesis came in the box. I admit I like the actual cases more than the box, but some Genesis games to come in these kind of boxes. Um, it's very like almost like polygonal looking. I didn't play much of it. I threw it in and tested it. This is in a lot. It's one of the reasons I got the lot. I've not played it though. 
95. I've never owned a rugby game, so I was like, you know what? This is the last lot I got, I think, of Genesis games as well. And it was played this or any other rugby games. Let me know they are. I know it, it has the same graphical look as a FIFA, except, you know, it's being played as rugby, not soccer or football. Hardball 3. I liked this game when I was growing up because I had it on the PC and this one was cool because you could like, it had the actual stadiums which is cool but the players were not the players but you could like change around stats and stuff like that. It was kind of cool. And Al Michaels announces it. I was interested in that was in that same lot as the rugby. Um, that label is off center. Looks like just like an NBA Live game from back then, except it's just college teams, not the actual players, but the colleges. And you can do like, you can't do the full 64 game tournament, unfortunately. I think the highest you can go up to is 32. It's still kind of cool. I don't know. March Madness is coming up in a few days. Here's another classic. I actually originally had this on the Super Nintendo back in the day, but this is another game I had gotten right before shutdown. NBA All-Star Challenge. We've got uh, Clyde Drexler, Akeem Olajuwon, Chris Mullen, and Patrick Ewing on the cover. This game has a three-point shootout, which is the thing I would play all the time. You could pick one player from each team. Each team had a player. So it just has the numbers. But technically 92. Because here's NHL PA Hockey 93. So now they have the player's license, but not the league license. So teams all have, it just says like Los Angeles, New York. It doesn't give you the actual name of the team. It's just New York, Boston, whatever. Los Angeles, Detroit, Chicago, you know, whatever. This is a good one. This is a really good one. I can't remember if the first NHL didn't. I don't know if it had all the teams. If it was, uh, I can't remember if it was a scenario like Lakers for Celtics and stuff where it was just the playoff teams. But here's the one. This is my favorite sport game of all time. NHL 94. This now had both the league license and the NHLPA license, so you had it all. This one introduced the one-timers, which was a game changer. Uh, the fighting came back in this one. I think they had fighting in the original. They took it out in 92, or 93, I should say. And they brought it back with this. Um, just a classic game. Good music. Like they have little music and stuff. Goal music, music going out the, throughout the game. The crowd moves around and stuff. They all look, they only have like four or five books, but they look like some guy would get up and go on the glass and stuff, brown the I want to say this one, you could also break the glass with slap shots from time to time. It's it's amazing. It really is. We still play it from time to time, me and my friends. NHL 90. 
This one actually has a little bit of value. I'm talking like maybe, I don't know for sure now, but um, the cart would sell for 20 on its own, but this came with the lot. It was rugby, Coach K, this, Madden 94, the college game, I think something else. Ninety-six onward went back to the look of the old games. Ninety-five changed the look of the players. It looks stupid in my opinion. They went back to the old look, but it's it's a classic NHL gameplay. I'm trying to think of which one like introduced season mode and trades and stuff. I I want to say they're in like the final three, or maybe even ninety-five onward to add that. Here's Madden ninety-four. Honestly, the only Madden game I have. I'm gonna say the Maddens hold up. In terms of the EA games, um, I even think the basketball games hold up better as well. The NBA lies. I don't have enough experience with like the Tony La Russa. I think it started as Tony La Russa and then went into like World Series baseball and then MVP. I don't have enough experience with those. I do want to get a few of them though. I love this one in '93 when I was younger. Me and my friends played it all the time. I don't know. They took the, everybody knows if you played these games when you're a kid, you'll still see random pop ups on like Instagram or something like this. Um, when I don't know if they took which game they took it out of, but a guy would get hurt and an ambulance would come onto the field and like crush 10 other players before picking the game. It was so ridiculous. Classic game. This is a strategy game that takes place in Roman times. I had this one as a kid and I wanted to get it again. I got it off of eBay for like $11, 11 12 bucks. On. I remember enjoying it, but like you get a bunch of people on each side and you get to build up your armies and stuff. It's a standard kind of game like that. Which one of those like building strategy games? You're going to build your army and move across and take over places and stuff like that. A lot of these are This was uh, this was actually the other game that was in that lot. The other ones. I have this on the Super Nintendo as well. I actually played this on the Super Nintendo back when I was young. I think I told a story. I was in eleventh grade and uh, I was tripping out, and I went home. And I, I would pop.
This is what it became. Uh, I'll show the other ones in a minute. Still really good though. These games back then that they made based off of like shows or movies. And Capcom was doing it real well. This is Konami. They did pretty well also. They look great. Like the, the, little, the, the, the characters look like really nice. The animation was really nice. This is a pretty cool game. sequel to Desert Strike. Um, Desert Strike and the, and the Strike games is a helicopter games where you're like saving people, you're blowing up certain things and stuff like that. It's an overhead view where you're using the uh, helicopter and you're doing certain missions. There's also Urban Strike. I don't know if they made any other ones after in terms of like in the series, I'm pretty sure. Oh, wait, there was Nuclear Strike as well. I think they've revived this, but it seems like a choplifter. It's like the evolution of like choplifter from like way back in the day. Um, sometimes no, you'll get who did the music, like whoever was doing EA's music. Like if you played Road Rash or Lakers vs Celtics NHL, the same guy was doing the music because it sounds very similar. Games always the EA yeah, these just these sixteen bit games had such a cool look to them back then. This is my original case of manual for this game, but it's not the original game. Let's go through the Lakers for Celtics. Lakers for Celtics in the NBA playoffs. Classic game. I think these games still hold. I want to say the first three. Definitely the first two only had to play all the teams. That's why I say Lakers were Celtics team made playoffs. I think Bulls were his players did also. They had all-star teams as well. But you could just play the playoffs or you could play single player. Just super fun games and the guys had special moves. Like I think in this one Tom Chambers can dunk from three-point line. Guys like Terry Porter are doing 720 dunks from the free throw line and stuff. It's ridiculous, but it's really fun. Lakers. Um, so it always took the playoff teams from the year prior. So this would have technically been. Oh, I guess maybe the you know maybe this actually came out in ninety one. I think it would have had to. Have. It says it right there. Duh. Which this would be going. But yeah, same thing. You get sometimes you get different teams, different teams made the playoffs and stuff. And we keep some stats, and it got better as it went on. Bulls vs. Blazers. Um, see, this one came out. They took two, a year off. 
This came out in 93. Um, so this would have been actually, they called it Bulls for His Place, but it would have actually been Bulls for His Sons. Same thing as the other ones, though. Great music in these games, too, especially the Lakers versus this franchise. The music's so good. And NBA Showdown 94, which they were going to make Bulls for Sons, but then they just made it this. So now you're getting to where it's going to be NBA Live. It still has the just side-to-side -side viewpoint. But this has all the teams in it. It's got season mode and stuff like that. And so now you're getting to, you know, what it would become. Garfield and Caught in the Act. It's a pretty good platformer. Garfield. Universe. I forget what happens. He gets sucked into the TV or something. And once again, though, a really nice looking game. Garfield looks really nice. The enemies look really nice. Um, great animations back then during that 16 bit era. Tecmo Super Bowl 3. Final edition. I never played this when I was younger. I played the two on the Super Nintendo. And I played Tecmo Super Bowl on the Genesis and the Super Nintendo. Um, this one's good. It's got updated teams and stuff like that. It's a little, they, they did a few little tweaks. It graphically looks slightly different. Um, but this is pretty timeless gameplay from these games. It's just fun. Uh, it's just fun gameplay, honestly. Let's do the final three. Now this is my original boxed copy of, I would always pull the tabs off here. I guess it doesn't matter, but I didn't like them back then. But the awesome Genesis case, the checkerboard pattern case that they used for like the first maybe two, maybe about three years until they went to the red spine. It just didn't look as good. This was just great. This is still, in my opinion, the best game case ever. Um, Sports Talk Baseball. Awesome game. Another one me and my friends will still play from time to time. Um, we got on the back here, Kirby Bucket, Will Clark, Lenny Dykstra, and Julio Franco. Um, I'm pretty sure you could do season in this. This was another one that had the player's license. It's not the team license, so the logos for the teams are weird. There's only three stadiums you can play in. Um, it had the announcer like they had a, I guess they had all of them. No, no, wait, this is a video. A videotape of purchase. They had a sports talk baseball and a sports talk football because Montana was on the cover of that. But it obviously had a sports talk baseball because I'm holding it. Oh my God. I don't think they had a basketball. Like the announcer would talk, and it was at the time it was great, but like even back then, he would still be when they would go through the mid inning thing and show the stats, and they'd have like an announcer dude chilling out at a desk. He, the guy would still be saying what was happening at the end of the inning. <laughs> and this is a great game, though. Another one where it's my case and manual from back when I was a kid. Recently, that is Echo the Dolphin. A classic game. You're a dolphin, obviously. You just gotta, I forget what you actually have to do in this. The thing that was cool about it was like, kind of just exploring the one you launch out of the water with them, do little spins and stuff. Official Sega Seal of Quality. And the last one. Where in the world is Carmen Sandiego? I just cut my nails, so. <laughs> Back.
back in the day. Very plain label. I had wear and tie. I never had this one when I was a kid. I played it on the PC, I want to say, but if I had it for the Genesis. I had wear and tie as Carmen Sandy for the Genesis back then. I need to get that one again. And it also came with a mini encyclopedia. Most everybody knows who Carmen Sandiego is in the time when you're chasing her through time, but in this one, she's anywhere in the world. Um, or Earth. No, it's world. They've also called it Earth in the past. They played five different languages. Okay, World Almanac. That's what they had. Maybe it was supposed to be an encyclopedia. Um, you're one of the Acme agents, and you have to find clues and catch her henchmen first. You have to use the clues to figure out where she's going. And stuff to finally catch her. It's a cool game. It's, it, I I always enjoyed these games. It almost played out like a TV show. <laughs> I need to get wear in time. They had wear in the U.S. Um, I think they might have just had a wear in Europe one as well. This game's kind of expensive. I think I paid like thirty dollars for this. I'm like, I want it. Um, digitized graphics, redesigned for Sega Genesis. And you learn, you learn some stuff along the way, which is always nice, right? But yeah, I want to get more Genesis games over time. I'm not gonna go nuts with it. Um, but yeah, it's my Sega Genesis collection. Like I said, it's mostly sports. Thanks for checking this out, and have a good day.